Hi there, welcome back, and in this video I want to talk about passport bros. It's kind of a new term that's getting thrown around. I probably only heard it first probably a couple of months ago. And what is it? And I had to ask myself, is that me? Am I a passport bro? How has this thing come about? Why are there suddenly passport bros? Why are there people wanting to be passport bros? So let's jump in and uh, I want to give my two cents on this topic. So what is a passport bro? I'm asking you. If you wanna tell me what your definition is, drop a comment below. But in my opinion, what it is, is essentially, what I think it is, is men escaping the West. And why are they escaping the West? Well, a number of reasons I assume. It's expensive, uh, housing prices are going through the roof, you need to buy a car, commuting to work, people don't like the office life, the rat race, the nine to five. And it also goes into the area of dating. I think a lot of men are unhappy dating in the West. They find it very difficult. So they're heading to cheaper countries, uh, countries that are less prosperous, countries that are kind of on the up and up. I'm thinking Latin America, Eastern Europe, and of course, Asia. Yeah, I've been in Asia for the past 14 years, but I have kind of set up my home in one place. So I don't travel a lot. And up until, say, the middle of last year, I was just working in a job. Um, it was only in sort of the past, I don't know, maybe the middle of last year, like I said, that I started working for myself. And after a couple of months, I was, my lifestyle kind of changed. I'm working from home. And uh, one of my friends did call me basically the laziest digital nomad ever. I can potentially go and live wherever I want. I do have plans to travel a lot more, but currently I am in the process of kind of getting rid of my stuff. I think that's like the first step. I'm getting rid of stuff I don't need. I had like a cupboard full of old phones and laptops that I no longer use. So I'm chucking those out. I'm selling a lot of stuff. I'm basically getting down to a suitcase and a bag. So a suitcase for my clothes basically and a bag for my tech, my camera, my computer, etc. So I'm interested to know why you think uh, this sort of movement has come about. Because to be honest, I did hear about it first, I think in the context of dating, like men are not happy dating in the West, maybe it's too hard, women out there are too entitled or getting too entitled, and you know, that's kind of a big thing lately. You've seen like podcasts coming up, sprouting up, like whatever, fresh and fit, you know, the red pill movement. And they're all talking about, you know, women in the West, blah, blah, blah. You know, they've built full, probably million dollar businesses and podcasts around the topic of, it seems like female hypergamy. With me, I feel like I'm a bit out of the loop because I haven't dated in the West for 14 years. Um, so I'm not really sure what it's like there. I can say when I went to the UK, for about two weeks and when I went to Australia for the similar amount of time, I did use apps and I did find that I didn't get any matches really at all. So it is definitely harder. Uh, where I live now, uh, it's easy for me to probably date once or twice a week, um, maybe more if I had enough time uh, and if I didn't want to spend like all the money that it takes to go on dates. Um, so I can kind of see, you know, why it exists in that context, why guys are moving away and moving to countries where they're gonna have more success. So there has been a lot of pushback I've seen also on this movement. Like, I guess it makes sense that there is some pushback. People have, you know, there's sort of a negativity around men who travel in order to find girlfriends or find wives. And for me, I don't really believe in that. I kind of reject that premise. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I think it's kind of racist, the people that do, because, you know, some of the cliche things that you hear are, oh, you're, you're only uh, living in, you know, Vietnam or wherever, you're only living in Thailand or whatever, uh, because you can't find a girl back home. Now, people who say that, you have to really think of the implication behind that, you know, like coming from people in the West who are saying it about men who are moving to, you know, poorer countries, uh, the implication is you're implying that the better women are in their country and that and the inferior women are from that country so i think people need to be careful when they're saying that kind of stuff you know you couldn't find a girl in your country so you're going to get one in that country as if that in that country you know they're all trash you also get that i think from people living in the country um you know there's that idea people will be like oh you couldn't make it back home so you have to come here and try to make it again the implication is coming from an inferiority complex because what you're saying is 
the implication is it's easier to make it here than it is in your country meaning your country's inferior so I don't know I think people have to be careful with that also I don't see anything wrong with making your life easier it reminds me of when people say oh you're trying to date 25 year old women because you couldn't handle a real woman you know like you couldn't handle a 35 year old and I don't I reject that premise as well because you know I don't want to I'm pretty sure guys don't want to handle anything, you know? Um, and it's ingrained evolutionarily, you know? You can't run around telling women, you know, you're not allowed to date tall guys. Oh, you're just dating a tall guy because the... Well, they're just dating tall guys because, again, their evolutionary psychology is their wiring. It's hardwired. Um, again, it's hardwired in men to be attracted to markers of fertility. If anyone's read the book, The Evolution of Desire, it goes into the science of, of our biology, the way we think, and markers of fertility uh, is something that people look for on an unconscious level. Markers of fertility is basically a scientific way to say attraction. Attraction is not a choice. So a man moving to the West because he likes the femininity of maybe an Asian woman, and he likes the fact that they're not overweight, and he likes the fact that they're, that younger women are willing to date him, he's just following the markers of fertility in his, in his, in his biological makeup. People kind of act like it's a choice, you know? It's a choice uh, who you're attracted to. I think men and women are both guilty of this mistake, which is looking through the world through their own lens and not the lens of the other person, not trying to see the world from their point of view. Uh, so it makes sense with the complaints that uh, men and women have about each other. Uh, I definitely think this passport bro thing has spanned from this red pill movement as well. And, you know, on both sides, you know, you've got, you've got like uh, podcasts out there who have a bunch of women sitting around a table and they're picking on their hypergamous nature. And it's the same kind of thing. It's like, well, it's like women haven't chosen their biological makeup so they're going to always find the best that they can get and whether that's a guy with more money and they're going to break up with their boyfriend to go with the guy who can offer more security you know a lot of that's nature similarly to if a guy is gonna work online and then go travel and live in the philippines on the beach and date a 25 year old when he's 35 or 40. again everybody's going to look out for themselves and everybody's going to do what is going to benefit them um, you know, the selfish gene, basically. That's, that's all that is. So I just wanted to rant on that a little bit today. What are we on, 11 minutes? It's a new concept that's, that I've seen around. Um, I am quite interested in it. I am quite interested to see what other people think about it. Why do you think the passport bro has emerged? Do you think I'm on the money with what their objective is? Are they just look, looking for an easy life and they shouldn't be blamed? Do you know any passport bros? Is it more of a deviant thing, perverted thing? Uh, I don't think it is. Um, I think there are guys who have just put themselves in the position where they can travel and live where they want and, and choose the country that's gonna be the most advantageous to them. And then I think there are people who are complaining about that. Um, and they don't like the fact that people are able to do that and they're really just hating on them. Um, what do you think? What do you think of the passport, bro? Uh, are you trying to become one? Are you one? Let me know your input, your insights. I'm interested in the topic um, since I am perhaps technically a passport bro or I, I'm gonna do traveling in the next couple of months. I do work online. So I'm interested to know what people think about this and uh, how do you think it's come about and what, if you're, if you're pursuing the same thing, uh, what are your goals ultimately? All right, thanks for watching again and take care.